Special Economic Zones, or SEZs, encompass a diverse universe of legal regimes, regulatory frameworks, and plots of land unified in their purpose of catalyzing economic growth and improving livelihoods. Today, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development reports there are over 5,000 SEZs around the world, including nearly 500 in Latin America and the Caribbean. While some SEZs are little more than areas with tax benefits, the most successful zones offer something more, creating unique regulatory frameworks and an enabling environment for businesses and people to prosper. In Honduras, the Zones for Employment and Economic Development, known by their acronym ZEDES, are one of the most ambitious models for SEZ governance. A 2013 amendment to the Honduran Constitution established ZEDES as a special subdivision of Honduras, free to adopt their own taxation systems and legal regimes. The law grants zones a high degree of autonomy for establishing a productive economic environment. However, the ZEDES remain subject to Honduran law in all matters related to national sovereignty. Today, there are three operational ZEDES in Honduras, Prospera on the island of Roatan, Ciudad Morazan near Choloma, and Sede Orquedia in the town of Las Tapias. The first Sede, Prospera, broke ground in 2020. Since then, the three projects have generated millions in investment and thousands of jobs. However, the Zedes have been subject to fierce debate, with many arguing they erode Honduran sovereignty despite their subordinates to Honduran law. Anti-Zede activists contend that a provision in the law could be read as allowing the National Congress of Honduras to expropriate land on behalf of the Zedes, though to date no zone has attempted to make such claims. The reputation of the Zedes has also been tarnished by their nexus to former President Juan Orlando Hernandez, who was arrested in February 2022 on drug trafficking charges. To date, there have been no substantiated cases of Zede investors showing a link to corruption or bribery under the Hernandez administration. Nevertheless, ending the Zedes was a key campaign promise for President Xiomara Castro. On April 21st, the Honduran Congress voted to repeal the 2013 Zede Organic Law. Despite government opposition, recent polling suggests that only 25% of Hondurans believe abolishing Zedes should be a priority for the government, as opposed to creating jobs. And 70% would accept a job within a Zede if offered. If the Castro administration moves to shutter existing Zedes, it may be exposed to millions of dollars in liability and international arbitration. Worse, such a move risks damaging investor confidence in Honduras at a time when the country should be reaping the benefits of nearshoring from U.S. companies looking to extricate their supply chains from China and relocate to the Americas. This does not need to be the only outcome. By working with SEDE operators, the Honduran government can identify reasonable reforms while continuing to support good jobs and sustainable economic growth for all Hondurans.